The advice and opinions expressed by the host of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Welcome to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod, and we're so excited to be here with you on this wonderful Monday, August 14th, 2023. Uh, got a lot of interesting things going on in today's show. Want to remind all of you that we are live right now on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and about a dozen other sites. Our wonderful Traven is going to start to show you some of the different ways that you can connect with the show, whether you're watching us live. And if you are watching us live, you have the opportunity to be commenting in real time from any of those big platforms. It comes directly here to my desk. You can write and just say hi. I love it when you tell me where you're watching from. Um, uh, but then some of you, many of you, listen to the show in podcasts. It's available in all of the major podcast platforms for free. It is a free download for you. I will tell you that we work hard to make sure that there is no cost to you so that you can get the information. You will notice that ads play during the podcast and we hope that you will acknowledge and enjoy those because that's what helps to keep the lights on. Now, some of you have said in podcast format, you're like, Shannon, but I'd like to listen to it without the ads. And I would actually pay to, to listen to it without the ads. And if that is your choice, you now have a way to do that. You can go to glow, G-L-O-W dot F-M slash Autism Live, and they will ask you for your credit card. It is $5 a month. And, but there is a discount if you buy it by the year because part of the issue is that they charge us every time you run your credit card. So if you want to save, we pass that savings on to you. It is cheaper to get it by the year than by the month. If you are, there it is on the screen, glow.fm slash autism live. We will refer to things as being on the screen throughout the show because this show is available as a video podcast on YouTube. If you decide that you'd like to watch and listen at the same time, we have a YouTube channel. It is Autism Live. So you go to youtube.com slash Autism Live. We hope that you will subscribe if you're a YouTube watcher or you'll subscribe to the podcast if you're a podcast person. Uh, that you will like us on Facebook and review us wherever you watch because that helps other people to know where to find us. Let's be clear that our mission here is to provide information and inspiration for that larger autism community. For me, that means it starts with the beating heart of our community, which is individuals who are on the autism spectrum themselves. We try to have guests and um, producers and people that can um, address that point of view. I identify as a pony. I'm a parent of a neurodiverse individual. So I'm a pony. Uh, so, uh, and by the way, those are the words that my son has said to me that I can use in, in to describe my relationship to that part of my life. Uh, good morning, Andrea. So thrilled that you're here. And hi, Michelle Manley. Hand pinky waving. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm doing it back to you in whatever form that it is. Anyway, um, but we really like to, we feel that there are a whole lot of different people in this community. And so we start with the people who are on the spectrum, but we include everyone who loves those individuals and wants to help those individuals because that's really what I think we all have in common. Other than that, we have almost nothing in common. We all have different needs and different issues, and this is a spectrum. Um, so there are, hi, Macy, so thrilled that you guys are here. Um, so we, we try to have varied shows and now at the Autism Network, we try to incubate shows and birth them so that you will enjoy them. So I think there's something for everybody here, but we really love it when you give us your feedback and you tell us what you like and what you'd like to see more of because we are birthing new shows. We're getting ready to birth a new show that's called Autismo y Comunidad. And we're very excited, and we'll give you more news about that uh, as it comes to fruition. But it will be entirely in Espanol. Yay! We used to have Autismo y Familia years ago, and this has been a long time in the hopper, but we're very excited about this new show. 
But also, I love to hear from you guys about what, what you'd like to see more of, what you need more of, um, and you always have the opportunity to write in and ask us questions. But I will tell you that we don't have a huge budget to get more information out to people other than how we do. So we appreciate it when you like, you share, um, you, you know, review, ooh, that helps us a lot so that other people can find us because we are a free resource. Yay. Okay. A couple of things before we start. In a minute, we're going to do the top 10 different coping strategies for parents when the world discriminates against our kids, because my experience is it's going to happen. And, and we have, we are, have, and are entitled to the feelings that we have, but how do you cope? How do you keep going? How do you make it productive? How do you, hi, Huma from Pakistan. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, but we have a couple of things that we're going to do before that. And one of the things is that we want to acknowledge, because we work very closely here with a charity that Dr. Grand Pichet founded, which is Autism Care Today. It is a wonderful organization here in the United States that gives grants to families and individuals dealing with um, an individual who's on the spectrum because there's always needs. There's things that you need. And I love that Autism Care Today is a place where you can go and you apply for a grant for the thing you need. They don't tell you, oh, here's what we're giving out. We're giving out iPads. Oh, you don't need an iPad? Too bad, right? They don't do that. Um, they say, what do you need? You get to write in and say what you need and provide documentation for that. And then for as much money as they have, they give out grants to individuals for those things. So we're always trying to raise more money because more money equals more grants, right? And every year, there are so many grants that are not fulfilled because money wasn't, enough money wasn't raised. So I'm all about raising money for Autism Care Today. And last year, we had the first annual All Ghouls Gala. So this year is the second annual All, School, All Ghouls Gala. This is an adult event where uh, it's a Halloween party. And, but no kids, this, you know, and you know what's amazing? It's such a good time. I think so many of us as adults are like, ah, uh, Halloween has been taken away by the kids, right? And we feel a little left out. So this is just for adults and it's an adult party. Uh, there is an open bar and lots and lots of food and mayhem, uh, fun mayhem. So last year it was a very specific thing. This year it's going to be a little bit different. And we have our little commercial for the save the date so that people can, it, the tickets aren't even on sale yet, but we want people to save the date. So take a look at this brief ad and then we'll talk on the other side. Hi, it's Code Orange Babies. You know what that means? It's time to save the date for the second annual All Ghouls Gala. It's a ghoulishly good time. Adults only. Sorry, kiddies. It's all happening on October 28th in Woodland Hills, California. They're raising money for autism care today. So you'd better be there. I'd hate to have to come looking for Tickets go on sale in just a couple of weeks. You want to be watching, because it will sell out. There it is. So you can find more information about it at the theallghoulsgala.com. And I really encourage you to go, if you weren't able to go to last year's event and you were like, I wonder what, what it was like, when you go to allghoulsgala.com, you'll see information about this year's event, and that video is there as well. But you can watch, if you scroll down further, you can watch a video of last year's event, and then there are pictures. It was amazing absolutely amazing. I don't think I've ever been to anything like that. It was a really good time and money was raised for grants. This year we're trying to raise more money and we got a lot of things in the hopper um, for that to happen. So here's my question to all of you. The person in the clown mask is someone who is a regular here on the show and has appeared on the show quite regularly. So write and tell me who you think it is in the clown mask. We, we did not go outside and hire an actor. There is a, a strike. 
as you may know. So let us know who you think is in the clown mask. Okay, uh, and if you're gonna be in the Los Angeles area, get tickets because it does support um, Autism Care Today. If you're not gonna be in the Los Angeles area and you'd like to give a, g uh, gift a ticket for someone in the Los Angeles area, you'll be able to do that. And I believe it's next week that the tickets go on sale, sometime next week, so we'll see. Uh, okay. Also, we're going to take a moment at the top of the show here to discuss a news story that was brought to my attention. It's in a publication that I'd never heard of before, thewarhorse.com. Um, and I think it, uh, it, it deals with more military things, which is probably why I've never heard of this publication before. But um, it is an article about the military and the different things that... Um, Mil the military currently, they have quotas, apparently, of how many people that they're supposed to voluntarily enlist in any given year, and they did not meet their quota last year, and the expectation is that they're not going to meet the, that quota this year. And it kind of asks the question, are they turning down people that they shouldn't be turning down, specifically people who have some sort of a diagnosis that the armed forces have... Well, the article says that it's not equal and even and that certain armed forces and certain recruiters and certain divisions are, are applying different rules. And so some people are being pushed out when perhaps they shouldn't be. I think it's a really interesting article to read. It's uh, from Jennifer Barnhill at uh, The War Horse. And the gentleman that you see in this picture, which I tell you, I saw this picture and it just... I don't know, tugged at all of my um, heartstrings. Um, the young man that you're seeing there is somebody who has appeared on our show before, and we've maintained a, a fun relationship with his mom. And he is one of the many people featured in the article. That's Tory Ridgeway that you're seeing there. And what a handsome young man he is, and what a intelligent, oh, my goodness, um, I, I just can't, like, what are all the best words to describe? A person of honor. That is what uh, Tory Ridgway is. He was on our show because a couple of years ago, he got a scholarship um, to uh, a wonderful university, and it was an ROT scholarship, and his dad still served in the military, and he was so excited, it was a full ride scholarship to go and, um, very, very excited. He had to write an essay in order to be eligible for the scholarship, and he wrote this award-winning essay in which he disclosed that he has an autism diagnosis and had one at an early age. And um, so it wasn't that the committee didn't know, and it wasn't that he was hiding anything. He was very, very clear about it. And he was awarded the scholarship. Of all the applicants, he got the scholarship. And then came the letter saying, we're sorry, but you have been disqualified and we're taking the scholarship away. Then there were letters and the, the article details kind of what went on with him, but it also details the experience of many other people who had the drive and the desire and said, I would like to serve my country, um, but you know, they have ADHD or they have an autism diagnosis or they have something else that became an impediment to them getting into the armed forces. I think it's a really well-written article, and I think it addresses exactly the heart of the matter, which is that, of course, the military wants to be discerning, and of course, they only want to take people who are capable of doing the rigorous demands of what's expected in the military, but that if you automatically just turn off and say, mm, these people can't do it, that you are saying goodbye to an incredible workforce. And there are things that are in place, like medical waivers, that are, are meant for people who have something that could be a disqualifying diagnosis, but that those medical waivers are not being offered on a regular basis to everyone. There are pockets in some of the armed forces and others not. Uh, and that that's not appropriate. And that even within the each armed force that everyone is not treated with some sort of uniformity with those waivers once they are keyed into them. That there are people who have been turned away without being offered a waiver and that even with a waiver that there have been some kind of ridiculous and redonkulous reasons that people do not uh, get the opportunity to serve. I want to say that for Tory, 
it was a really difficult summer. He was supposed to be getting ready for school and it was supposed to be all solved. And he had stopped applying for scholarships because he thought he had this other scholarship. It all worked out for Tori, and eventually he said, I am stopping the appeal process. I don't want to be, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but basically he was like, if I'm not wanted, then I'm going to go. And, and he has gone on to great things and will go on to great things. He's been doing an internship with the FAA. This is a young man that we can all be so proud of. His conduct uh, before and during this mess, as he was being discriminated against, and now is the highest echelon that we should all strive to be. What an incredible young man. Whose loss was it? ROTC. Um, but this article goes on to say that there are many others like him and, and different from him, but with like issues that they'd like to serve, and they're being turned away and perhaps unfairly. I hope you'll read it. I hope you'll um, support this article because I think it calls into question a lot about how we look at people with, uh, and just paint a paintbrush and go, oh, a broad stroke and go, well, that's so-and-so and we're going to put them in this box. And we have to stop that on all levels. We certainly have to stop that with the autism spectrum. And he's a great example. What, what a gentleman. Um, and he will go on to do great things. He's already doing great things. OK, so we wish him and everybody else in the article well. Again, you can find that at thewarhorse.com. OK, moving on, we have this um, talk that we want to do. And it goes hand in hand with this because as I said at the start of the show, if you are a parent and you have a child that's on the autism spectrum, part of the thing that I'm always talking about that you got to deal with, it's that inner game of tennis, right? That there are going to be things that you're going to be asked to do and there are going to be days that are hard, just hard. And you're just going to get to a certain point. And I put, for those of you who are listening in podcast on the screen, there is a mountain range in the distance and there is a pathway through the mountain range because that's how I look at autism parenting. Like there are obstacles to be overcome, but you got to keep moving and you got to find the pathway through. And sometimes a mountain comes up unexpected in your face and there's hurt and anger and grief and fear because people discriminate against our kids like Tori right? And, and it's hard. And, and it's on many different levels. There's the loss of whatever that was taken away from them when they were discriminated. But there is also the feeling of what it feels like. And it can suck the life out of you. I always say when people ask me about being a parent of an individual on the spectrum and what that experience is and what I see in other parents, I say, this is a hard job. But let me be clear. It's not hard because of our kids. Our kids are blessings and we love them. We love them as much or more as any other parent. And, and we love who they are, right? We want to help to give them skills so that they can do whatever they want in life, but we're not trying to change them, right? What's hard about this is having to deal with the rest of the world and their opinions and their attitudes and how, and it can be big or small. In Tori's case, he got a full ride scholarship taken away for no reason. Imagine what that was like for him and for his family, right? But it can be a simple thing that I can remember going to school and saying to the, you know, to everybody at school, if you're going to give a treat, my son was on a very specific diet. There were things he could have and things that he couldn't have. And I said, if there's ever a treat that you're going to have at school, let me know. And I will, I will leave work and go get something that's compatible and show up at school. Like even if it's last minute, tell me, give me the opportunity to try to give him a substitution. So he's not sitting there with nothing. I told everybody that. I would tell them every single year, and yet over and over and over, there would be times when I would say, hey, what happened at school? And as he got older, he could tell me, he's like, oh, they gave out popsicles today. And, and at that time, my son couldn't have a popsicle. Now they make popsicles that he could have had, but they didn't back then. I had homemade popsicles, and I had homemade popsicles. And every time something like that would happen, I would come up, and I'd be like, well, you know, uh, what can I do about this? And I would come up with strategies because we got to keep finding the pathway through the mountains, around, over, uh, whatever. Um, 
I want to say hi to an autism journey with Elijah. Hello, Shannon. I finally made it. Sorry I'm late. It's okay. It's not like class. We're not shutting the door if you're late. It's all good. Uh, Andrea says, but obstacle, but do the obstacles ever stop? It feels like once we climb one mountain, there are 10 more mountains waiting. I have to tell you that in my experience, you can't ever get comfortable. That it's, we're all, like, it helps, and I'm going to talk about this in, in the talk that we do, but it helps to say to yourself, well, I'm just moving forward. I don't think that there is a rival. At this point, you know, my son is 20 and he's in college and he doesn't need his supports. Every once in a while, still something happens. And I don't like to be caught off guard and I don't like to be surprised, but I still am. And I go, really? Really? Is that, I'm sure that Tori's mom thought, hey, my kid has arrived. He got a scholarship. I don't even have to worry about college because he's paid for college for himself. And he, you know, he won the scholarship by his own merit. And then the letter comes. So I am sorry, Andrea, but I don't know that it ever ends. And I think that part of this journey is making peace with that and saying, well, what do we need to do today? Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Okay, we're having some mic issues here. I'm going to move it to a different place, and then, Trayvon, you're going to tell me if this is better. Um, could be that I've got ruffles on this shirt and that it's creating problems. Sorry, guys. Uh, but also want to say that Autism Journey with Elijah said homemade popsicles uh, area must in my house, and they are delish. They are delish. They are absolutely delish, but now you can get them, and it's quick, and you can... What I used to do is make, a because you know you have the tray of six popsicles and I would make them and I would take the tray to the school and they would keep them in the teacher freezer and people, teachers would eat them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you try to find, find a workaround, um, but now you can go to Whole Foods and they, they even have them and they're colored by vegetables. You, there's no artificial food coloring, you, you know, and they come in the tubes, they look like everybody else's. I'm just saying. But the homemade popsicles, yeah, they're, they're awesome. Uh, send a recipe, please. I'll find them. We, we did blogs about them. I'll find, um, but you can do almost anything. You know, what, what we would do, I would always get like the flavored seltzers and we would just take up fruit, take fruit, and we would either put it in the blender and mush it up and put it in there. And if I needed to thin it out a little, I would put the flavored seltzers. Or I, sometimes I just put fruit and smush it into the thing and you pour the seltzer in and it's a good popsicle. I'm saying, I'm just saying. Okay, um, but let's talk about these strategies because I think it's not one size fits all and it's important that we have things that we, that we go, okay, this is, you know, I'm not alone in this and here are some things that have worked for other people. So the first thing though is that I have to acknowledge that you're entitled to all of your feelings. So when your child is discriminated against, I don't want you to be like, well, I just need to get over it. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying acknowledge that hurts. And you are entitled to those feelings. It's just how you process it, where you process it, who you process it with. Because there are productive ways to process it and then there are ways that paralyze you and, or even worse, that set you back and hurt the progress that you're working on. So have your feelings, be entitled to them. Part of this is figuring out how to process them and how to move forward and not get stuck in them. But you get to feel all the thing, things that you feel. You're entitled. If your child is being discriminated against and we all know what happens, feel the feelings, um, but let's... Um, Let's get started here. So the first thing, and I think this is really important, is you got to choose your battles. And you got to choose your battles based on what's right for you and for your child and what's right for you right now. There are times when something is going to happen. I'm going to take the school district for an example. That some of you will write to me and say, okay, here's what the school district said and, you know, and it's not good and it's not right and they're clearly discriminating against your child. you got to ask yourself, you can be right, and you probably are right, and they are probably wrong, especially if they're discriminating against your child. Of course they're wrong, right? But, it, but you may not have the bandwidth to fight them today. And that's a hard, hard thing to accept. But I have seen families that dug into the trenches and fought the school district and took years 
and, and got it fixed. I would count myself in that category. It took years before anybody would listen to me. Um, I feel like they had to see his progress before they listened. Now, you know, was that time well spent? Well, you know, I, I'd like to think that we left it better for the next person, but it cost me my health. And there were times that I can think of one year in particular while I was fighting that my son was in a classroom that looking back, I wished I'd yanked him. I wish that I had not put him through that. So you got to think to yourself, okay, is, I acknowledge the battle here. Somebody's discriminating against my child. I know that I'm right, but is this a battle for me today? Is this what's best for me? Is this what's best for my child? And if it's not, I want to encourage you to have peace in the decision, in the choice to say, I'm not fighting this today. You know what they always say about a land war in Asia? You can't, because you can't win on two fronts. If what you are working on is your child's health and you say, I don't have the bandwidth to deal with the school right now, I'm going to say, bless you. Bless you for having the maturity to decide this is not the moment. That is not to say that you can't fight it later on. That is not to say that you can't, you know, come back later on and change your mind. But you got to choose your battles about what you're going to fight and what you're not going to fight. I so respect that, that in Tory, who we were talking about before, that they started the appeal process and were trying to fight that scholarship. And listen, we all know that there's much to fight there. That's wrong. That, that's 100% wrong. But you know what? He needed to go to college and he needed to get launched in his life. And so the decision to say, we are not going to put more energy into this right now because we're going to focus on college. Man, I respect that. So you, you can be right and still decide not to fight. You got to do what's best for you and your child right now. And sometimes that means fighting. Sometimes that means standing up loudly and saying something, and sometimes it means quietly flipping somebody off as you walk away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know uh, that some of you are in the fight right now. But I, and I want to say to you, you know, there is, you're in the right. You know, eventually you're going to win. But there have been families who have said, I know I'm right, but I'm going to move to another district where I don't have to deal with this, Meshuggah. And yes, sometimes that's what the school district is counting on. But, you know, you got to do what's right for you and your child right now. You have to decide this is important or this is not important. And do not beat yourself up if you say now is not the moment. I can think of one dear friend that, um, you know, her husband had cancer. And, and she, you know, she, got to, she had to deal with that and with everything else that was going on in her life and her child with autism. And later on, she would look back and go, I don't understand why I didn't fight this. And I would go, what are you talking about? Of course you didn't fight that. You were busy fighting something else. There are other things, and you have to do what's right for you in the moment. But have the peace of mind to say, I'm making a choice here that I'm, I'm going to move over here, and this is how I'm going to deal with it, OK? Number two, and I think that this one is critical, it's the pen. The pen? Okay. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, you guys. We're having sound issues, and I'm moving the pen, and it's making noises. Okay. So, th I feel like this is critical, and I think it's one of the guidelines that we have for ourselves, is that you got to prioritize your child's self-esteem. So, if someone is discriminating against your child, first line of defense is handling this aspect of it, that you need to convey to your child in whatever way is appropriate for you and your child that they are not the problem. There are lots of ways to do this and lots of different things that you can do. If, you know, if someone is standing there yelling at your child, there would be, you know, I would remove them, but I would be saying to my child, this is not you, this is them. They have a problem right now. You are fabulous. And I would spend my time talking to my child about that, not dealing with the you-know-what that's saying and yelling things at your child. I just went through something the other day where we went, I, did I already talk about this on the show? We went to see Les Mis and there was an incident. The guy sitting next to me was just a piece of work and he said something to a young woman in front of us that I, you know, uh, 
I think had some extra things going on and he was very abusive. And then when the mom, uh, when intermission came, uh, was trying to talk to the gentleman next to me and to say, listen, you know, you really can't talk to my child that way. Um, and I just loved that she stood up for herself and stood up for her child and said, this is not appropriate. Um, and I went out into the lobby and found her and said, he is a you know what, and I'm with you. And if he says anything, my husband's going to be sitting next to him for the second act and we're all in this together, right? But I love that she advocated now, and this guy got belligerent and stood up and was flapping his program in her face. Uh, and I stood up and, and at one point started yelling. I was very passive aggressive. I don't like how I handled it, but I was very passive aggressive. Um, but she, and she said what she wanted to say and then she left. I just thought it was amazing how she handled it. But I think that this is, and she went to find her kid and to talk to her kid and to say to her kid, don't listen to him, you know, people are gonna be buttheads, right? I think that that is critical. I can think of one time when my child was very little and, and I tend, I'm, I'm not always the best, I tend to be very passive aggressive, but sometimes passive aggressive gets it done. We were in line at the bank and he, I had no choice. I, in order to feed him, I had to cash this check and I went at a time when I thought it was gonna be less and I, I had to take him with me, there was no other choice. And he was little and still at the point where I could pick him up and hold him, but he didn't, you know, he would wiggle and he wanted to, and he was being kind of busy and he was humming, that was a lot of what he did. And the gentleman who was standing behind me was really being a jerk. Um, and he was, <laughs> you know, and making all these noises and then muttering about how people shouldn't bring kids to the bank and, you know, that kind of passive aggressive stuff. And so at one point I picked up my son and I held him and I very loudly said, you are such a wonderful boy. You are so amazing, and I know that this is hard for you right now, and it's especially hard for you, but I want you to know that I love you, and I see what a good job you're doing. You're just a three-year-old, and you're struggling to be able to do this, and you're a good job. Sometimes adults can't even do this. And after that, he kind of calmed his jets a little bit because it put it, but very passive-aggressive. But I was talking to my son because I wanted to make sure his self-esteem, that he wasn't overhearing what this guy was saying. And even though I didn't know how much language he could understand at that point, I wanted him to know my priority is him and his self-esteem, my priority. Have I always gotten it right? No, but those are the things that I regret. I just said, I regret the year that he spent in this one woman's classroom because it was not good for his self-esteem. And if I had it to do over again, I would be like, uh-uh, I don't care what her story is. She doesn't get to feed on my child's self-esteem. So um, I see you guys, uh, that guy would not like my bank. They are kid-friendly offering lollipops and kids center, LOL. Uh, Macy, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. I don't know, I had it in my head. I will, reco I will recover my son and in a few years, we can put all this behind us. I need to adjust my mindset. I wanna say to you that, it, you know, we're gonna get to something in just a second, Andrea, that um, you know, even my son is considered in that recovery, um, box, you know, uh, he's considered one of the recovery kids. I'm still seeing it. I just want to be clear with you. I'm still seeing it. And I, and I don't know, I, I have friends who have kids that are not on the spectrum and they see, you know, things where their kids are discriminated against too. I don't want to say that it's just our kids. I'm saying I think it's a part of life and I think it's important that we adjust our mindset to say that's coming and I'm going to deal with it, which um, I guess it's number four. So we'll get to that in just a second. Um, but I think this is important too. Number three is identify the issue before you react. I, I think sometimes something happens and we jump because it's a hair trigger response and we jump and and we will say things and we will do things. I think this is in particular really, I put I picked up the pen again, Trina. Um, I think that um, like with the school district, somebody will say something and, it, and it, you have a reaction. And remember we started with you're entitled to your feelings, but I think it's important to get 100% clear with what 
is the issue for you? What is the problem? Because it, it goes deeper. You know what I'm saying. Uh, I always tell the story about how we were, well, my son was kicked out of the YMCA first uh, because of his diagnosis. Um, and, and then we left as a result of that. And I, it took me a while. It took me a long, long while to figure out what was the core of the issue for me. And what the core of the issue was for me may not be what the core of the issue was for you. But I felt like um, here was this organization that was supposed to be this Christian organization. And I, you know, I, I'm laughing out of like pain, uh, not because it's funny, but that they were saying he's not, he was a two and a half year old. And they said he's not welcome here. And I felt very, um, oh, it, it struck so many chords for me, right? And I had to get clear about that before I finally spoke to the director and said, here is how you have let my family down. And here is the mistake that you are making and, and, and had other examples. But I understood that the core of the issue was that they were touting themselves with this word that to me means certain things. And yet they were so freely and openly discriminating against my child. Um, and, you know, I believe that, and I've been told that they changed things after that. We did not ever go back. Um, but that I, I've met a parent that went exactly to that YMCA and had a much different experience and said, oh my gosh, they could not have been more welcoming. Um, so I'm glad that I addressed that issue. So know what the issue is, because things get squishy on your insides. Know what it is, and then you can decide how you want to react to it. It means holding off sometimes and getting abundantly clear for yourself before you decide, okay, this is the course of action that I want to take. I want to fight. I don't want to fight. Here's what I want to say. Here's what I don't want to say. And I could have just left the YMCA, but I decided to leave and have a meeting and say, here's what you did wrong. There have been other times that I've just walked out the door and said, I don't have the time. Um, okay, so number four, oh no, what have I done? Um, shoot, I just have to wait apparently for the words to come up. Oh, there it is. Uh, ask, number four is ask, what do I have control of? It's very hard to see on the screen. I did it wrong. But um, this to me, I'm, I'm sure you guys all know the serenity prayer, which is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference, right? So one of the questions that I like to say, like going back to the popsicle example is, what do I have control over here? Well, I don't have control over somebody coming in last minute and handing out popsicles. I can try, I can threaten them, I can do all kinds of things, but ultimately I don't have control over that. And I can make myself crazy over it or I can ask myself, what do I have control over? Well, I can put popsicles in the freezer in the teacher's room and I can hope that somebody remembers that they're there and get them. Do I actually have control over that? No. Do I have control over teachers eating my son's popsicles? None. So I have to make peace with that and say that's outside my purview. I have no control over that. So you know what we ultimately did? I would say to my son, here's the deal. If you're at school, and somebody hands out something that is something you cannot have, I want you to come home and tell me and you will get a big treat when you get home. You will get a Lego or you will get something and he'd go, really? Now I've upended this by taking control over what I have control over. And my son would be thrilled if they would show up and have a surprise treat. And always before he'd be like, oh, I, you know, I don't get to have it. He would go, oh, 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 I'm getting a Lego out of this, right? And he would be thrilled. And everybody would be so apologetic. The teacher would be like, I didn't know that mom was bringing in cupcakes. I didn't know that was going to happen. And I, and I would go, it's okay. And Jen would go, I'm getting a Lego, right? So take control of what you can take control over and let go of the things that you can't take control over because they're just crazy making. So ask yourself that question and then that help leads to the path of how am I going to get control of this. Um, number four is don't take responsibility for teaching everyone. Sometimes we feel this internal pressure like uh, somebody is doing something 
and they're wrong and I have a responsibility to teach them that you're doing this wrong. I have to be honest with you, when you have the time to do that, okay. But a lot of times, especially when your kids are younger and need more from you, you may not have the bandwidth for this and that's okay. You don't have to fight every battle. Remember we said in the beginning, we're gonna choose battles. You also aren't responsible for teaching everyone. Sometimes you just walk away and go, they'll have to figure this out later. And does it mean that there's a potential that someone else will, will have to deal with this problem? Yes. That is why I always say we hold hands and we get through this together. I have more time to fight some of this stuff now than I had when my son was little. So I can pick up some of the slack. You cannot be responsible for everyone. And there is, I remember feeling like, oh no, not only do I have to learn all this stuff for myself so that I can be there for my child, but I also have the responsibility of teaching all these numb nuts. I didn't have the bandwidth. If you do, bless you, but you don't have to. It's not your responsibility. Your kid and your kid's self-esteem, right now, that's your, that's your area, that's your niche, that's the place where you gotta like say to yourself, am I giving that my all? And if you are, if you are sleep at night and knowing that you're doing a good job. If you have the opportunity to teach somebody as you go and you have the bandwidth, you do. But you cannot teach everybody. Even now, I can't teach everybody. You do what you can. I love that you're all talking to each other on, online. I love that. Number six, sometimes when people do stuff that discriminates against your kids, it's like immediate and you got to handle it right then. And the thing that I like to do is breathe and remind myself of three things that I'm grateful for. Perfect example of this was when my son was in kindergarten and it was time for the holiday concert. And my, my mom was visiting. Now keep in mind, the year before when he was in Fun for Fours, which was this preschool program, there was the concert at the end of the year and my son barely could get through the concert because he was needing to go other places and do other things. And an aide had to stand there and hold his hand for him to be able to do it, right? And that was where we were. Now it's a year later, we're kindergarten, and the aide's telling me I don't have to stand with him. He's like in the middle of the, the you know, all the classes of kindergarten together, and he's singing, and everything is wonderful. My mom came to visit night before she starts singing a song with him, but he's singing very softly. And just barely you can hear him. And she says, You gotta, and my mother was in Sweet Adeline. She's like, You gotta sing out, Jim. You gotta, you know, just Ethel Merman in it. And, um, and, and he's, and he was like, what? No, I don't think I sing that loud. And she's like, no, sing out. So we start the concert. I have this on videotape, you guys. Uh, we start the concert and my mom's sitting up closer with one video camera and I'm further back with a bigger video camera. And cause I don't think dad could be there. And we're like making sure we get it videotaped. And, um, they, and they sing a couple of songs and he's singing and he's up there and he's having a good time and they get into the 12 days of Christmas and we, they get to the five golden rings, which is a little bit louder. And all of a sudden you see in his mind, it kicks in. Oh, grandma said, I got to sing louder. So he starts scream singing everything. Now at first, you know, it takes everybody a minute to identify which kid is doing this. And you can hear it on the tape that everybody sort of figures that out. And, and then, you know, there's a little bit of nervous laughter and then it's kind of funny for a minute and then people start being annoyed because it's taking up space where their kids are performing and, um, and he continues through all of it to scream sing and I'm like, oh no. And there's the one guy who is sitting relatively close to me and he very loudly says, something along the lines of that kid's an idiot. Somebody needs to shut him up. Okay. I thought, and my mother heard it from several rows up ahead and my mother about lost it. I thought she was going to go over and hit the man in the head with her purse. Uh, and she was so upset and she was in tears and she came back to me and I was packing up the camera afterwards and she said, why don't you seem upset? And I said, Oh, believe me, it hurt my feelings. Um, and I hope he didn't hear that. And, and I, you know, he was up on the stand, so there wasn't much I could do. But um, the minute 
we were able to talk to him. I gave him flowers and said, you were amazing. And I loved how you sang out and you are amazing. All, you know, feeding the self-esteem. But in that second, all I could do was breathe and think of three things that I was grateful for. And I, and one of the three things that I was grateful for that I thought was, there is no part of this man that realized that my child had what was considered at the time a, dis, a disability. Like, he didn't realize that my that for my child that was not something that was a cognitive choice that he you know didn't understand the social ramifications of that and the man didn't realize that or he wouldn't have said that if he if if my son had rolled up in a wheelchair he would not have said that right that in reality the reason why he said that was because my son was passing as being like the other kids and then did something that stuck out, but not so badly that somebody thought, oh, that's somebody with a disability. And I decided that for me, I was going to take that as progress. That, um, you know, it's not the be all end all. Do I still wish that the guy hadn't said it and that we, you know, yeah. But for me, I decided we're going to take that as a win. Because what were my choices, right? So I think it's super important to look at things and go, okay, what, and it could be something totally different. You can say to yourself, I'm grateful, you know, that we had the ability to sing today. I'm, you know, what, because it helps you to gain perspective on the fact that everything is not this one minute and this one idiot. And this per, everyone is not gonna discriminate against your kids. It's not gonna be everyone but one person can certainly muck it up, right? But that shouldn't make us believe that it's everyone. And I, th I think, um, you know, having that moment and thinking about what are some good things that are going on tempers it. Um, anyway, uh, and I didn't, my mother did not hit the guy with his purse, her purse, nor did I. Okay, um, number seven, uh, you really have to have people that you can vent to. I say share slash vent with safe allies. And this is different for different people. You might have a, a best girlfriend that you can call up and go, oh my gosh, you can't believe what this person said today, which completely ticks me off and hurts my feelings and I want to pummel somebody and get it all out, right? Um, there are other people you're going to find are not safe allies for this. That your friend who has neurotypical kids might not understand. Your mom, who's always been so great with everything, might not understand. You know, um, your significant other may not even be someone who understands this. So you got to find yourself somebody that you can say this to, whether that's in your local support group, group, your global support group, or, you know, just one friend that you have. And even among autism parents, right, sometimes if your kid's ability is different than somebody else's, sometimes that's not a safe place to vent this. you got to know who is your person that you... And if, it, if you can't find it in your community, have a counselor, you know, there's all this online counseling right now that mostly, you know, your insurance will cover. Find someone that you can take this to because you do not want this to fester. I have a tea kettle in the picture because if you bottle this up and internalize it, it will turn into other things. It, you will become bitter. Uh, and you will want to isolate, and sometimes people get sick. Don't do that to yourself. You have to have a place, uh, somebody to share it with, so that and it says, nope, you're absolutely right, that person's a butthead, because you're going to run into buttheads. I, I, you know, I'm sorry, you will, but they're not everybody. And if you don't let it vent and go, that person's a, vet, a butthead, you're going to start looking around going, there everybody is, and we don't need that. That's not productive for you or your kiddo. Um, Number eight, I feel like I missed one of them. Number eight, you're going to allow for safe expression of anger, frustration, fear, and grief. Uh, and on the screen, I have a, a, a mess of paint uh, that's beautiful, but it's very messy. There are some people who do art that they just paint on a canvas and they on the canvas, right? I now love to go do pottery. This mug that I drink from all the time, I, I did this on the pottery wheel and it it's so therapeutic for me. I, but when my son was little, I couldn't have gone to a pottery studio. I wrote. And I would write letters. And they would be 
really caustic and nasty and have lots of four letter words and embarrassing. I would write and go, dear, and then bleepity bleep 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 bleep. You bleepity bleep bleep, right? <laughs> With no intention of ever sending it. And some, uh, there was one day I was so mad at a group of women at gem school and I went home and I wrote, I mean, shockingly bad words um, that I said to these women. And then afterwards I read the letter back and it was so shockingly, you know, verbal vomiting that it made me laugh. And I went, oh, this is the best thing because now I can laugh at them. Do you know that there is a technique that they use in psychology? I don't know what it's called, but when you have a memory of something that happened and you're just fixating on it and you can't like get it out of your head and you're just upset about it, that you play the tape of the memory in your head, like you re-go over it, but you pretend that you're a cartoonist and you just draw over parts of it or you draw words on it and you know or you know whatever to disengage the power that it's holding over you and i think that this is really important that you allow yourself i know people that run that that is their sanity that you know and while they're running it's they they tell me i'm not a runner but they tell me that it's like they they take and they shed whatever the idea is and say, I left that a mile back. Sometimes I weed. I go out of my garden. My husband can tell when something's kicking my can. I go out and I will just weed like there is no tomorrow. And I literally am thinking about the people that I'm frustrated with yanking them out of my garden while I'm doing it, going, you don't belong here. This is our safe space and you have not earned a place here, right? That's really therapeutic for me. It's very care. You have to be very careful to not do this in negative ways. Look, I've done that too. You can, you know, try to numb it with food or alcohol or, you know, other kinds of addiction, right? But that all leads us right back to the same place. So find the healthy and safe expression for, and it's anger, frustration, fear, and grief. Like, let's own that. It is just, I mean, anger is my first emotion that I want to go to because anger is easy, right? But as I peel back the layers on it, I go, I'm really frustrated. And that leads to me acknowledging that I'm afraid. And then there's always some grief right at the bottom of it, right? Grief that life is not, you know, and the people are not who I thought that they were going to be. And that's okay. Um, cause I have other things and other people to be grateful for, right? But get a light bulb on it. You shine a light on it. It is not as big, um, always, uh, you want to model good behavior, dealing with feelings and idiots. This is how we teach our kids, you know, that we are going to, um, behave a certain way and that we're going to be positive by taking those three breaths when something happens when we're angry and making it visible in front of our kids. That stuff rubs off, you guys, because there's going to come a time when you're not there when your child is being discriminated against. How do you want them to react? We got to model the behavior and they are going to run into idiots, you know? Um, we want them to not assume that everybody's an idiot, but know what to do with an idiot. So we model that good behavior. And number 10, we're going to give ourselves that grace to fight another day. Some days you're going to be too tired. Some days you're not going to have the words. Some days you're going to choose to fight other battles, but you're going to give yourself the grace to know I will be back another day. I may not have it today, but I will be back another day. Today I'm going to be mindful of my child's self-esteem and I'm going to let the rest of you buffoons go about your business. But I will be back some other time to revisit this uh, or something else, right? You're going to give yourself that grace. I know I missed one. It was the one that I really wanted to get to. Somewhere along the line, I'm backing up through... Did I just... El eliminate it from the PowerPoint? I have no idea. But, huh, it's just gone. But it was pack the tartar sauce. This is an expression that's very um, much of our lives and our home that, um, you know, they used to make those little life's little instruction booklets and everybody would give them out when people would graduate from high school, college, and graduate school. And, there was, and it was a bunch of lessons that a dad wrote down for his son 
um, saying, you know, here, here are, here's the instruction book went to life. And one of them was, if you're going after Moby Dick, pack the tartar sauce. And I have, there have been times in my life when I've faced some big challenge that I literally have gone out and bought a jar of tartar sauce and put it someplace where I could see it so that I could go that. I'm, I, you know, and, and what that is, is the assurity that you're going to keep going that there is no obstacle that's going to stop you, you're going to keep going. Knowing that, you know, if you're going after Moby Dick, you know, you have your tartar sauce ready, which speaks to the mindset of, I'm going to do this no matter what. I'm going to face challenges. I know that I am, but I'm going to keep going. Because there were so many times on our path that something would happen and it would seem like all hope was over and everything was lost. And I would remember, no, 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 no. We packed the tartar sauce. For me, the tartar sauce was that we were going to keep doing whatever we were doing so that my son could get the most hope of the most progress. That's what the clear path was. Um, and that we were going to check what we were doing along the way to make sure, and we would adjust because progress for him to have the best possible outcome that we could ever have. But very quickly, I saw that that wasn't going to be a set it and forget it kind of thing, that I was on a path that I would, you know, it was like playing a video game, right? You don't just get on the video game and get on the path and suddenly arrive at the castle. It doesn't work that way. You have little obstacles that come and then you meet big bosses and you got to keep going. And, and we understand that when we play a video game. This is what it is like for us as parents of individuals who are on the spectrum. We are on a path and we are going to meet obstacles and we're going to meet some big bosses and we might have to fall back to other things, call in reinforcements to be able to do something, but we don't give up. And so that's why I say pack the tartar sauce, because I, I think, you know, when people say, what's the single thing that you did that helped you? And I say it was get that mindset on, okay, what's the challenge today? And, and what is it? And how are we going to face it? And how are we going to deal it? How are we going to back, get back to being productive? That was what was key for us. And as soon as I switched into that mindset, things started to get better. Before that, it felt like what I call being a bug on a, on a lawnmower. There's just like stuff coming and coming and coming at you. And I was like, when is it going to stop? Why is this happening to me? And when is this going to stop? Well, you know what? None of that kind of thinking was helping me. If it helps you, I, I, you know, you're entitled to think, but that wasn't helping me. You think how you need to think, but for me thinking, no, 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 we're packing the tartar sauce. Oh, there's an issue? Of course there is. I knew there would be one. I don't know what this issue is. Let me look at it. Let me see how we deal with it. I'm going to deal with my feelings about it. I'm going to share it, vent it where I can. Uh, for me, I would sit and write about it, and sometimes I would write comedy about it because that's me, right? But then we go on. And when I was in that mindset, which I could not maintain all of the time, just keeping it real, but when I was in that mindset, we could move forward. When I wasn't in that mindset, I would get paralyzed and things would shut down for me and then things would shut down for my son. And then I would have to have someone or something jolt me out of it and I get back on the path and go, right, tartar sauce, because we're going after Moby Dick. I know that um, your path is not an easy one for all of you that have been writing in. But I want you to know that I respect you and I respect what you're doing on a daily basis. And I think it's gorgeous, beautiful. I think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen when I see a parent who is like, I'm showing up for my kid. That does not mean you have to get it right every day. It doesn't mean that you are going to get it right every day. But when you show up for your kid and prioritize their self-esteem, I'm telling you, it's that strength over time thing that we put on the first slide. You can do this. You are doing it. And there are a lot of people who don't understand what that is, who don't know what it means on a daily basis. 
I understand from my point of view, it's not the same as yours. I don't want to make it sound like I know exactly what you're going through, but I understand what the requirement is, having been there and done that. And I didn't think that I could do it, but that tartar sauce thing, you know, day by day, inch by inch, we got through it. Um, and we live to tell the story and hopefully help some of you. So I, I know you got this. You're doing a good job. Don't forget that. I want to tell you a little bit about the week that's going on tomorrow. We've got uh, Ask Dr. Doreen with Dr. Doreen Grampiche live in the house. Our topic is autism and nutrition. You guys can be sending in your questions now to me or... Um, and you can write to me at Shannon at autism-live.com or you can just visit askdrdoreen.com and click the contact and you can write as much as you want there. Send that. Try to send it today because then Marina gets it to me and I add it to the show in the morning if you have a question or you just write in live. You can absolutely do that. Then on Wednesday, our jargon of the day is going to be ABC data. Oh, and that's a good one, let me tell you. And our guests are going to be Ling Xiao and Chris Storer. They are from Spectrum AI. They are movers and shakers who are trying to create better outcomes. So we're going to welcome them to hear everything that they want to talk about. Then on Thursday, we've got stories from the Spectrum. I think it's a marathon of the first five episodes. And on Friday... Set your timers because we are doing the new Let's Talk Movies and we will include, it's not just this, but we will be doing our Barbenheimer reviews and I'm telling you, you're going to want to be there for that. I have much to say. Uh, it should get interesting. We want to hear what Moira says as well. I don't know if you guys have seen these movies, but I have now seen them both. Um, uh, Autism Journey with Elijah says, funny how that is the topic. Today we are doing safe foods to eat with autism and ADHD. Great minds think alike, LOL. Absolutely. Uh, Vulcan Mind Melt, that's what we have going on here. Okay, I so appreciate being here with all of you and thank you for all the wonderful messages and for talking to each other because you know what I always say, si se puede. Barbie says I can't say that anymore, but I don't know. Jury is out on that. Um, okay. <laughs> It's one of the things we'll talk about on Friday. Uh, and I am going to be, uh, Friday is going to be pre-taped uh, because I'm going to be first in Las Vegas and then in Utah with my wonderful kid. We are in Las Vegas. We are going to be visiting a place called Meow Wolf and we are going to be videotaping there. Um, they have told us that they are going to help us to arrange that because they are the first ever autism certified entertainment uh, company and they have made everything autism friendly. I cannot wait. And we'll have that video for you sometime in the future. All right. Uh, I adore all of you and you are doing a good job. Keep up the good work and we will see you tomorrow with Ask Dr. Doreen. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. See you next time.